I saw this movie back in 1988 when I was a little kid, and I'm pretty sure lots of this movie went over the top of my head. I also grew to dislike this film, because when my parents worked, uh, every morning and evening they would pick me up from a babysitter's place. Now, the person's place that I stayed at, they had kids themselves. We all went to the same school. And the eldest uh, uh, kid in this household had a few movies that he would watch repeatedly at nauseam. And these three movies I have grown to fucking hate. Grease, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Why? Well, he liked cars. And, yep, yeah, I guess cartoon cars and chases or something, I don't know. Maybe that was a part of it, but, you know, Grease and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, or cars and shit. I can avoid Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Who Framed Roger Rabbit easily. But try being somebody who likes karaoke. And all that grease. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Who frame? I'm 38. Maybe it was time to give Roger Rabbit another look. And see what I thought of it. So, Who Frame Roger Rabbit is a crime comedy movie. It's directed by Robert Zemeckis. Yes, in fact, this is the movie he did between Back to the Future and Back to the Future 2 and 3. And it's also written by Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman. It's based off this book, apparently. Pretty great cast, too. Uh, Bob Hoskins and Christopher Lloyd are great. Uh, we got uh, Charles Fleischer as Roger Rabbit, and we've got uh, Kathleen Turner as Jessica Rabbit. I'm just going to get the positives out of the way first, because there's so fucking many. One, this movie holds up today, just from a visual standpoint. The way they merge the animation with the live action is mwah, perfect. So well done, and so amazing, even to the today, that I'm surprised there haven't been a lot of movies like this. Maybe not the same genre, but a lot of movies that blend, you know, the real and the animated. The only one I could think of at the top of my head is maybe fucking Space Jam? Maybe other people can think of a whole bunch of these, but uh, it didn't really take off as a subgenre, did it? So Who Framed Roger Rabbit <coughs> is kind of a pastiche on old noir movies also it makes a lot of fun of uh, comedy flicks and and you know, cartoons and things like that it's a great opening i love the opening of this which feels like a opening that you you know you go to the movies and sometimes there used to be an animated short before the movie would begin because the movie's kind of short so they play a little cartoon at the start well this time they do that but it leads into the movie and it's so fucking well done and clever in fact the cleverness of that opening scene does not let up throughout the rest of the movie. But only from a visual and technical and comedic aspect. But there's one part of this movie I don't like. I'm going to get to it in a minute. And it's a big part of the movie. But what I saw watching this movie is so many clever gags, be they right in front of your face or subtle in the background. So many of them that uh, I, would, I don't think I got all of them either because I haven't seen some of the, the movies there. They're uh, parodying or just because there's so much going on that I just miss them. So in that respect, this movie's probably worth a few watches in, in, in that respect. Only just to see if you missed anything or anything like that. <sighs> there's so many just wonderful moments. I... Oh, they're just... I hated the story. I like the characters. I like the setup. I like the jokes. I like the sight gags, the ones that are either right up here or over there in the background somewhere. I like it. It's a visual feast. And I was kind of surprised that this is a kid's movie. I'm like, what? This is actually a kid's movie? Because I'm watching this movie, a lead character, played by Bob Hoskins, is a drunk. And it's quite adult in quite a few places. I think it would have gone over a lot of kids' heads. But I don't think, that, apart from the animated stuff, I don't think there's really anything here for children to enjoy that much. I think this is more for, for I guess, adults to enjoy. I don't know. 
uh, I just found that everything about this movie felt uh, grown up and, and, and adult and well thought out, wonderful world building, all of this kind of stuff. And then there's one thing that lets it down. It's this run-of-the-mill, cliched, predictable story. I thought we were going to get an interesting kind of uh, mashup of noir and animation. And, and, you know, you go, oh, we'll follow the threads. Like, oh, I wonder who's, who's behind all this. You know straight away, this is a fucking mystery. A five-year-old who just walked in halfway through the movie and watches two minutes of it and be like, it's him, isn't it? Yeah. And that was at odds with the rest of the movie. I just watched something beautiful, clever, hilarious, and amazing with a story that's just fucking lame. It's like they put all this creativity to every facet of the movie except the story. And, well, I, the thing is, though, I don't know how well this adaptation... Ad, ad, uh, I don't know if this is a good adaptation of the book or not. I haven't read the book. But watching this movie and the story this movie has makes me less inclined to read it. <sighs> it's just it's such a shame. The music's great, the world building is wonderful, and then you've got this really boring Disney kid plot. It's crap. And it brings the whole movie down. Everything else about this movie is a technical, wonderful masterpiece of filmmaking and cinema. I loved it. But then you've got this boring-ass Disney story. Fucking Disney. <sighs> From a whole, as a whole? Out of six. But if we're just talking just the actual filmmaking and just richness of the actual movie, of Who Framed Roger Rabbit itself, it's an it's a eight or a nine up there. It's really up there. It's just so unfortunate that we've got a really pedestrian story. Doesn't There's no surprises. Doesn't keep you guessing. And it's just paint by numbers. Which is pretty much what I expect from a Disney movie. The same, man. Bob Hoskins is amazing in this flick. Oh. Chris Lloyd is good too, even though I thought his character was lame. And I knew it was him for two reasons. One, it's obvious. And, you know, hey, there's spoilers in this review, by the way. I, don't, I haven't really talked about much about what you see on the screen, but it's pretty easy. My wife remembered this movie a lot more than I did. So I was like, hey, hey, Christopher Lloyd, the judge, he just avoided the, the stuff on the ground. He's a cartoon, isn't he? And that's not bad. If it was, I, I guess if it was more subtly handled or something like that, it wasn't really. It was pretty obvious to me. And it's, and you always know it's him. There's no other suspects. Not really. You just know it's him. And he conveniently ties it all together. Oh, I'm the, the dude behind the real estate stuff. Uh, this guy dying. Uh, your brother dying as well, by the way. Uh, it's all me. It's just all me. <sighs> Which is weird, because I feel like the whole rest of the movie is kind of nuanced and rich and kind of detailed. If only it had a story to match. Give me a like, dislike, share, and subscribe.